And if he keeps sucking on that milk at some point in time, he won't want no milk. All right. He shouldn't want no milk. Let me say it like that. Because I've seen some five-year-olds still sucking on bottle. Oh, no. On bottle. He's still walking around in the pamphlet. Something oh, wrong with that milk. Something wrong with it. As a parent, as your kid get a certain stage in life, you ought to be the ones to know it's called weaning. Yeah. Yeah. See, that pastor car been trying to wean some of y'all a long time. I've been popping. And every time it, he take it away from him, he want to move you something else. Uh -uh. I don't want to go, uh -uh. you know, hiding and, and kicking and screaming. No. no. I'm just going to be real with you. Hallelujah. But you know what, y'all? We family. We family. And, and, and if you love somebody, you tell them the truth. We've been walking around too many years in bondage, having deceived ourselves, and we wonder why we come to church week in and week out. My life ain't got no better. No. That's because you're still sucking on the bottle. It's time for you to put that bottle down. And the scripture says, and look, it says now, uh, someone need to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. The oracles is the truth of God. What God said is, the oracles is what God said. That's his word. Yeah, that's it says, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Uh -huh. Now, when you try to give a baby something solid and they're not ready for it, they choke on it and that's spit right. it out. That's right. All right. Amen. Uh, they may get it down in their system, but their bodies are not big enough to digest it and break it down. Uh, most babies will spit out solid food if they still want a bottle. But once they start getting tea, and I know back before they had Gerber's baby food, those moms used to take them babies and mash that food up. That's right. Amen. Make it solid. So, 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 they could, so they could get some of it. That food that was a little bit too awful, they could just gum it. They could swallow it. And at some point in time, a baby won't, don't, don't, shouldn't want no milk. Amen. When you get teeth in your mouth, you want to pull on something. You want to chew on something. <laughs> and one thing about it, and we found out a lot of us who, who are hooked on meat, yeah. we, 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 don't want, we don't want a meal if there ain't no meat. <laughs> but you know, when you get the word of God in you, that's all you all want. Amen. You don't want to go back to something that's soft that ain't going to help you grow. When you get hooked on, on, on the meat, that's all you want. Amen. And when it comes to the word of God, then that just makes your life so much better because you're going to be steady eating meat. Steady. Amen. And as you eat meat, meat gives you protein. Amen. It, it makes you strong. It makes you grow. It, it, it keeps you and sustains you. You're able to go a little bit further, run a little bit longer, stay in it a little bit harder. When you start going, you start maturing, you start having greater discernment. See, a baby has no discernment. Thank you, Lord. A baby can eat slop and don't even know it's slop. <laughs> and there are a lot of churches today where those who stand in the pulpit are feeding folks Amen. slop. Amen. And babies don't know Amen. the difference Amen. between slop Amen. and real food. Come on. And that's right. the problem. But when you have, a, and when you know what solid food tastes like, you know what meat. You know you have that good steak. It's yeah. flavored and the season is good. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You're not gonna eat hamburger and say it's a steak. Uh -huh. It don't taste the same. Oh, Some, right somebody there. can't give you a weenie and say, "Oh yeah, that's a steak." You know, <laughs> you know it, 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 your taste buds. We talk about our senses. Our mouth has has a palate in it, and we start eating certain things. We get our taste buds that run across it and say, "This is this." It lets us know certain things taste a certain kind of way. Yeah. And as Christians, when we have exercised our senses through the word of God, we start yeah. growing up. Yeah. When somebody's feeding you slop, y'all spit it right back out your mouth. Y'all spit it right back out your mouth. Yeah. Right your mouth. Yeah. When you start growing up, you won't take no slop. Yeah. Yeah. When, you, when you start growing up and start getting no meat, all you want is meat. Yeah. You won't settle for anything yeah. less than the meat of God's yeah. word. And that's why I say it's time for us to grow up. When we start growing up, then we become more unified. We become more effective. We be all we, we, we are all that God wants us to be. All auxiliaries of the church start functioning in the way that God wants them to be. We ought to be looking for, for something to do. Pastor, can I do this? Pastor, can I do Not for him trying to search you out and try to break, drag you out and, and, and try to uh, encourage you to do it. Because if you start growing up, the Spirit will guide you and tell you this is what you need. Mm -hmm. See, because we all got gifts and talents. Amen. And when God gives you that gift and talent, He says, you start using what I give you, you might see you got something else. Ah. Y'all know the parable of the talents? The one, the three, and the five. The one that had the one took it and buried it. Didn't do anything with it. He got yes. took from him, and it was given to those who would yes. use it. Yes. And the yes. Bible said he was cast out into yes. outer darkness. Oh. Yes. Yes. God said, if you don't use what I give you, you're going to be held accountable. Yeah. Think about the great gift of salvation that God will give you. Yeah. Yeah. What have you done with the gift? Yeah. Have you taken it for granted? Come on, come on. And thinking that that's all there is and since you've gotten saved? Yeah. 
Amen. Or if you start trying to move forward on what God has given you by coming, and not just coming just to say, I come to Sunday school. Oh, yeah. you, you don't study before you get here. All right. You don't write nothing down while you're here. All right. And you won't ask no questions because you don't know, because your little pride get in the way. Well, if I had something, they're going to... I'm ashamed. Uh -huh. Satan got you just where he wants you. Okay. If you know you don't know something, then you need to ask a question. Right. Because if you don't know, the Bible says, I had, God said, I had you not to be in here. We had no cause we want to be. The Bible is, is complete from Genesis to Revelation. We got everything we need to live this life. The, the book, uh, I think it's 2 Peter, that God has given us everything that pertains to life and God. Amen. God can't do no more for us, y'all. Don't expect it. All right. Yeah, you can expect one thing. He wants to bless you. Let me yeah. take that back. The Bible says, blessed is the man. <laughs> Am I right? That, that's a, we're not talking about blessing. That's a continual state. You always stand in. So the Bible says, if a man's ways please God, he'll make his enemies his footstool. Yeah. And a lot of us, our enemies just keep us underfoot, keep us All beat right. down, keep us tossed. Because guess what? We have no discernment. We don't know there's a spiritual battle going on. We don't know that there's darts to get bodies. We don't know about no armor. We going out there wondering, why am I feeling the way I am? But see, because what you don't know, Satan uses against you. When, Satan was, when, when, when Jesus was led out into the wilderness to be tempted, he put the word of God. Satan knows the word of God, but he twists it. He needs things out of it. But when you say the word for what it is, the Bible says if you resist the devil, He'll flee. He'll flee from you. How do you resist the devil? With the word of God. You got to say what thus saith the Lord. Not what thus what you say. You got to be saying it, but also you just got to be in place in your life. Don't say it if you ain't doing it. You remember Paul was going around casting out demons and them seven sons of Sceva? Y'all know the story? He run up on this demon possessed man. And Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who, and he said he beat him naked. And they they run that beat up. All right. See, you got to know that you know who God is in your life. Amen. Uh, Pastor Carl been there for seven years, and, and it's still a lot of y'all are still babies. All right. It ain't Pastor Carl fault. We are where we want to be spiritual. And, and the Book of Proverbs talking about being slow. That's another word for being lazy. All right. You know what you need to do, but you just can't get around to it. Hmm. You, you put everything in front of what you need most important is the Word of God. Amen. He said, you need to start getting on the solid food. And when you start getting on the solid food, there's some things that change. Amen. See, when you start using the Word of God, you get a greater discernment. Amen. The Bible says that the Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. When you start getting discernment, you see the devil before he gets to you. Yes, sir. Right. As soon as you up his mouth. Yeah. That's that, that's called that's called discernment. See, God is a revealer, but when you have no discernment, Satan just ease up to you, whispering in you, just go right along with it. Right. But when you got discernment, that means when you hear something ain't right, you say, "No, I'm not. I'm not going to accept that." Amen. See, because people can speak things into our life, and what we do is when we take them inside of us and, and eternalize them, mm -hmm. they got the power. Mm -hmm. We give the power of our of our control to other folk all the time. Amen. Folk will speak something over us, and we're not. Uh, uh, Grown up enough to realize that it's a spiritual battle. All right. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. But yes, we, that, what's that old saying? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but word, words hurt a lot of us all the time. So I'm speak, somebody can say something. You know it's a lie. Who said they said what? You want to go confront it. You want to go get your flesh. And if you know it's a lie, then what is that to get mad about? What is that to confront if you know it's the truth? But when you're a baby, they talking about me. They talking about Jesus. Say that. Amen. Say it. They rejected Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus was strong enough in the Word of God that and we talked about in Sunday school this morning. See, Jesus could separate the sin from the sinner. Yes. That's our problem. We we, right. we we can't get we we can't we don't do the separation thing good. Amen. The Bible right. says you need to look beyond the fault to look to the need. Yes. And the need is to love people where they're at. Amen. And when you start growing the Bible says we call them the burden bearers. Amen. Bear ye one another's burdens. Yes, and right. so, so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. And if you're a baby, you can't bear nobody's burden. Your home is too much for you, right, and you sure ain't looking to get nobody else. <laughs> but when you start growing up, you know that God will help you pack around everything. Yeah. And guess what? Not for us to pack it up. Our job is to give it to God. Yeah. We're not built to handle other folks' burden. Yeah. We take it on, but we take it to the Lord in prayer. That's why the Bible says take everything to the Hallelujah. Lord in prayer. That's a part of growing up, having that discernment. Yeah. We're not built to handle the cares of this life. Alright? That's, right. right? That's why we're stressed out. 
don't know which way to go. All right. Amen. And we have no faith. Yes. Because we have not taken the word of God at his face value and let it transform our lives. Yes. It, it, the scripture said when we give our tithes and offerings, he said, I try me in this matter. Yes. He said, you know, I know you're not doing it, but I'm giving you another chance. Mm -hmm. Try me and yes. see if I won't open you. Yes, I will. The windows of heaven. Yes. We take our money, we spend it on everything but, but for God. And it's all God's anyhow. Yes. But when you start trusting in God and believing in God, God said, I'm going to show you some things that you've never seen before, that you've never experienced before. He said, your life is going to be that that's going to call somebody and say, you know what? There's something different about you. And I want, I want some of what you got. See, because when you start growing up, you start standing out. There's a separation to come. You start standing out with, see, those who stand up, those who are teachers, help those babies. All right. That's the job is to have to bear the burdens of those who are still crying and, and still not committed to doing that. But because he loves you, he continues to teach the word. Amen. Amen. He's he, he not going to give you that watered down stuff. He's not going to tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you the truth. Amen. And guess what? One day when you stand before God, you're not going to have any excuses. All right. See, it's better that you not ever come than to come and to hear the word of God. Right. Yes. Right. Because every time the word of God goes forth, that means you're going to be held accountable. Amen. Right. It's a dangerous thing to come and hear the word of God. Don't do nothing with it. And that's, a lot of us have been on dangerous territory for a long time. Amen. And God says, I got something better for you than what you have. We're living on the minimum. See, babies just get by on the minimum. But God says, I want you, he says, I come that you might have life and life more abundant. Yes, sir. He wants our lives to be so great, we can't help but be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Amen. That's what happens when you grow up. You're looking for somebody. Who can I help? Who can I help? I know God got me because God said, I'm going to supply your needs. Yes. God says, better to give than receive. As long as you know, you, you, you put it out, God, put it back in. Back Amen. in, give it out. Amen. See, when you start growing up, you become selfless. Not selfish. And you're always looking to help somebody else because you know where your help comes from. And that's what God said. It's time for us to grow up. We haven't caught being in seven years. I will have a house full of teachers. I will have a waiting list. Stand in line. Every Monday. When my turn coming? When my But if you're not living it and you haven't got it down right, then that's just where you at. But this message today says it's time for us to get off the milk and to get on meat. Yes, sir. And that word exercise, this is by reason of use. The only way your life is going to change is by you doing what God tells you. Amen. You can come and sit here week in, week out, and listen to these good sermons, and they don't do any good, they just go in the waste. You can come to Sunday school, you can come to Bible study, your life won't get any better. What a waste. Because time waits on no man. That's right. And life is, is a perpetual motion of change. Amen. There's a time and a season for everything. God says, you only got a, a small fraction of time to live on this earth. Mm -hmm. Make the best use of the time you got. Amen. And the good thing is, is the thing you do now, you can get blessed on this side. And what you're doing is, you're sending up some blessings on the other Amen. side. The yeah. crowns you will receive on the other yeah. side. Yeah. But God wants to bless us on this yeah. side before we even get to eternal. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. Amen. We cut our own selves short from our own blessings and we don't do what God tells us to do. That's all this message is all about. Amen. It's time to grow up. Amen. And guess what? Those of us who are mature, that don't mean we're perfect because none of us will reach perfection Amen. as long as we are walking with us. But we still got this flesh to deal with. Amen. But we're all striving to get to the same place. Amen. And we're all trying to keep growing and getting better as we go. Amen. Because when you meet somebody that can, that can that they'll tell you that you can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're preaching, you need to run away from them. Because the preacher still learns. God still speaks to him. He still got some things that God's working out in his life. He's just a little bit far along, but guess what? He's supposed to be an example to everybody else. Don't mean he's perfect. But that means he's living overall the life that God wants him to live in front of you. That you can see by him using the word of God the right way. How God has blessed him. Amen. He hasn't called us all to be preachers. Amen. But he's all, he calls all of us to be servants of God. Amen. We all got a work to do. And it's time for us to go to work. Yeah. See, babies don't know nothing about no work. Huh. They ain't even go to the cat there. Right. Work. But when you grow up, you want to go to work. You want to work for the Lord because the benefits are so great. Amen. They're so great. Amen. Working for the Lord. Working for the kingdom's sake. That's all God wants to do, y'all. Amen. But it's time for us to grow up. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.